Welcome everyone. In this tutorial, we will learn how to add weapon sway. So the first things we need to do is understand where our weapon is and how much it needs to move. So let's go to our first person character, event graph, and find where our movement is located. So we want weapon sway when our weapon moves side to side. And the way we can do that is by finding out current value of moving right or left. So let's promote the axis value to a variable and let's call this sideway movement. Let's get the pin, plug it in, and we can plug in the pin into the scale value. From here, let's go to our begin play. So we don't have one, so let's just type begin play. Get the sequence node. And let's create two new variables. Mouse x. X axis movement. And mouse y. Compile. So, set mouse x and set mouse y. So, there are functions for this. We can just type get turn, and that gives us the axis value for turning, and get look up. And this returns just the values from looking up and turning, and feeds them into these two floats. So what we need to do now is actually update these every 0.1 seconds. So let's do set timer by event and let's break this pin, hold alt and click the pin and let's plug this into here instead. And let's create a custom event and let's call this get mouse x and y. Plug this in and this output we can plug it into the event to link these two together. We want it to loop and the time between 0 0.1. Now you could be asking why not just use an event tick. The reason we use a timer instead is because the event tick relies solely on frame rate. If frame rate fluctuates then the value updated may also fluctuate and might cause lag if our FPS fluctuates heavily. So by using 0.1 on the timer gives us more consistent results even if frame rate varies. From here we need to use these values and actually modify our right hand and the way we can do that is in the anim blueprint. So let's go to our event graph and create a new function. So what we can do actually is click here. Let's call this weapon swaying. And we need to access those values we have created in the first person character. So let's get as first person character so we can access everything. What we need firstly is one new variable. Let's call this our hand rotation and simply it's just type rotator. So from here, let's get mouse x and map range clamps. So we want to map a range, however, we want to clamp it so it cannot go under the value or over the max value. So the in range A is minus 1, positive 1, and minus 15, and positive 15. So let's now get sideway movement, copy, copy and paste the value, plugs in sideways movement, and the values can stay the same. And now we need get mouse 
Y. Copy, paste, and plug the value in. From here, let's f interp2. So f interp is just float interpolate2. It just linearly interpolates between two values. So the current and the target. And the speed that it interpolates and the delta time, basically the warp time. So our target, let's change this to target. And the target will be right hand rotation. However, this is in rotator and we need to get it to float form. So the way we can do that is by splitting. And now we can access each individual axis. So this is going to be the Z axis. Delta time. Just simply get world delta seconds. And the interrupt speed can be 5. You can change the value if you'd like. So now let's copy and paste. And let's plug that into target. And the current will be the y axis. Enter speed, leave at 5. Copy and paste. Plug that into the target. And the current is just going to be row or x axis. From here, let's now plug these into right hand rotation. So let's set right hand rotation, split it. And now the reason why we set this is because we're going to feed this value into our right hand soon. And it's going to update based on this value. So let's plug this into row, this into pitch and this into your okay from here get the pin execution pin and plug this into set so now we can compile save now the last thing to do is go into our anim graph and in between this state machine and the output we need something called a transform bone so of this type local to component and plug this we need to convert this local into a component space so the way we can do this is just type local to component and we need transform modify bone the alpha stays at one now we have translation rotation and a scale we only need rotation so let's get our hand rotation and the bone to modify hand r its translation mode is going to be left at ignore component space however the rotation we're going to add to any existing rotation and it's going to be in component space so leave that as the same scale is just going to be left at component space and ignored now from here we need to also move the left hand because if the right hand moves the weapon moves along with it but the left hand is going to stay at its original spot so we need to update the left hand to follow along with the right hand the way we can do this is copy and paste, plug that in. So now instead it's going to be hand L and rotation is just going to add to existing. So drag the pin into result and it will convert it from a component to a local and just plug in our hand rotation 
and plug that into rotation, compile, and lastly go into event graph and get weapon swing function and plug that into the sequence. So every time the blueprint's updated, it also updates weapon swing. So now if we check this is in order. So let's go back into our map. Test it out. And you can see they are both rotating nicely. If we move side to side, the weapon moves side to side. Look up, down, left, right, and that's working as it should.